vacation destination. I'm Melissa Marie. If you are new, I am so happy to meet you. And if you're returning, I am so glad to have you back. So this is actually part two in a series that I am creating that breaks down all of the pros and cons of the dating apps and websites that I used when I was online dating. Previous to this video, I had created an entire list of all of the pros for Facebook dating. And now I am creating all of the cons for Facebook dating that I can come up with. And like I had mentioned in my last video, I definitely have some disclosures before I can even really get into the content. The first point is the fact that I fortunately have not been able to work with these websites and apps for about nine months now, which means that most likely I will not be remembering all of the details of the app or website highlighted and for the fact that I will not be able to really review any new features listed in the apps that have come out within the last couple of months. Secondly, I am only speaking from my personal experiences, so yet again, my pros could actually be huge cons for you guys. It is ultimately up to you to decide what is a pro and what is a con, but I am creating these videos to try to help you guys out as best I can and try to help you guys navigate the online dating world. Without further ado, let's just get into the video, shall we? So the first con for me was that while using the Facebook dating feature, I was always slightly concerned that somehow my profile and the fact that I was on the feature would get leaked out to my close friends and family on Facebook. And I know <laughs> they definitely highlighted the fact that your friends and your family members would not know if you were on the site. However, in the back of my mind, I was always concerned that somehow there would be an accident or a slip up of software or whatever to where my friends and family members would somehow come to realize that I am dating online. And the thought of that was absolutely horrifying, almost to the point of me not wanting to use the app. So the second biggest con for me was the fact that the Facebook dating feature did not force the user to upload a profile picture of themselves and or upload any pictures of themselves if they so chose not to do, which was a huge, huge con for me because I could never confirm if it was someone that I would be interested in or attracted to based on a lack of pictures. There were several guys that were on the feature that had profile pics of either inanimate objects, cartoon drawings, or sometimes just no picture at all. And being the person who I am wanting to know what this person looks like, I couldn't confirm. I ended up passing up a lot of guys and not reaching out to them because I didn't know who they were, I didn't know if I would be attracted to them, and I don't know if they were actually real. So like I said, this lack of feature of not having to choose an actual picture of the user definitely limited my pool as far as what I felt confident with in even liking a person or potentially matching with a person because I personally did not want to match with someone that I didn't know and I didn't want to match with someone that was not in alignment with who I am. And because of this lack of feature, it was super easy for anyone who wants to try to catfish someone. So no, I'm not trying to give you ideas, but if you were to catfish someone, this would be an app or a website that you could probably use it and get away with pretty easily. Number three is probably the feature or the consequence of using this app that I absolutely hated. And it's probably one of my biggest cons for even using this site. So number three is the fact that I did not have many choices to choose from in the pool of matches and potential matches that I was presented with. One part being the fact that I personally limited my pool pretty much from the site based on lack of profile 
and lack of information about the person because not only were they not forced to upload a picture of themselves, they were also not forced to create a biography of themselves to let the potential matches know who they were exactly. Based on <laughs> the lack of knowing who these people are and honestly not exactly liking what I'm seeing as far as the pool to select from, I eliminated a lot of my matches unfortunately. And partly because once I limited myself to this number of pool, or like to an even smaller pool of people, I basically found that the app would take a break from me for a while. I would ultimately have to wait several hours, days, and sometimes even a week or two before I would be presented with any new matches. And after the waiting period, I would often find that a lot of these matches or a lot of these potential matches, once I was presented with a new one, would ultimately live an hour if not further away from me, which for me was not conducive to what I wanted in a relationship. Because these matches were something that I didn't want to invest in, I would even have to wait longer before additional profiles were there for me to view and for me to examine. So ultimately, <laughs> the feature in the app would basically force my hand to expand my search further out of my radius than what I had wanted, which ultimately did not end well for me because yet again, these matches presented were not something that I wanted to invest in because they were a lot farther away than what I wanted. Number four ties very closely into number three and the fact that I did not get very good matches on the site that were worth investing in. I think a lot of what had to do with that fact is I had restricted my search settings to exactly what I wanted and unfortunately there were not many people that had matched up with my settings. And there could be several other explanations as to why I didn't get that many great matches on Facebook. One being that the pool of singles around my area might not be even using the app. Maybe the pool of singles around me didn't really match up with the settings that I had put into place. Maybe there's not that many people in general using this app. And maybe my profile wasn't necessarily the target audience for other users using the app. Number five, which was probably one of the biggest downfalls of the app for me, is the fact that you cannot set the settings to be super restrictive and super specific on what you want. I am the type of person that has always been wanting to find a match that would check off all of the boxes for me, which would include education, lack of substance use, the list goes on. And using Facebook dating, you can only specify several characteristics that you want your match to have. Those being the distance from you, their gender identity, and the age range. All being three things that are must-haves to create a profile. Their height range, their spoken language, their education level, their kid status, and their religious beliefs. And to be honest, the app wasn't very good for me in sorting out what I did and what I did not want. I ended up getting presented a lot of profiles that would include substance use when I specifically said that I did not want it. And it would also include religious beliefs that I don't necessarily agree with or agreed with at the time. And yes, I was presented a lot of men who had kids already, which for me was a no. Number six is the fact that the messaging and the notification center for this feature was kind of wonky. It would be very rare that I would get a notification as far as getting a message as soon as the message was received. In fact, it could be up to an hour or two before I even was notified that I had received a message through the feature. Don't know if that's something that had gotten fixed through an update or whatnot, but this was a huge 
annoyance for me. And number seven, which is the last item on my list, is the fact that it was free. And I know what you're saying. You're saying, in your last video, it was a pro that was free. And you could even be judging me a little bit for this viewpoint. I feel that because the app is free, it's almost a double-edged sword. Yes, it's good because it allows you to get involved with the dating world without having a cost associated with it. However, by not having a cost associated with this app, Essentially, it's not being restrictive of who can use the app. Now, before I get any further, I need to emphasize that I am not coming from a place of judgment. Rather, I am coming from a place of experience. And here's why I feel the way that I do. Because there is no cost associated with this site, ultimately anyone can use the site their dating purposes. And because of this lack of startup costs or this lack of fee, I felt like I was getting matches that weren't necessarily representative of who I was looking for in a potential partner. Ultimately because it's a lot easier for a person to catfish you using a website that's free. By not having a fee associated with the app, Ultimately, people may not be deterred from catfishing because there's no cost to their potential harm. For them, it's a win-win situation because they're able to catfish and they're able to do it free. Yet again, like most apps, there's probably people that catfish from all walks of life and probably if they're using online dating, and sometimes even dating in person are at risk for at, at least one time getting catfished. So yet again, not placing judgment on the type of people that use this website because I too was one of those people, but not having a startup cost definitely widens the pool, which may not accurately represent of what the type of person that you might want to attract in a partner. And like I said in my last video, honestly, Facebook dating was one of my least favorite apps. I did not enjoy this app for all of these different and various reasons. To be honest, it was a good startup app because it was the app that I had used first and it was the first website that I used to create a profile. So I think ultimately for me, overall, I think this was a really good startup app because it was free and because honestly, by not having some of the features and settings that I was looking for, it forced me to be very selective on who I brought into my inner circle. And I took that lesson th with me throughout all of my dating online experiences. Overall, it definitely was not my favorite app, but if you're just starting out, this could be an app that you're looking for. I hope you enjoyed. Definitely stay tuned for part three. I'm gonna be presenting another website slash app in my next video for you guys. So definitely stay tuned and I look forward to reviewing more dating apps and websites for you guys. And until then, I hope you remember to live faithfully, to lead courageously, and to love unconditionally. I will see you guys next time. Bye.